Hi there! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. As you can see from my new backdrop, we're participating in Funguary this year. What is Funguary, you may ask? Well, Funguary is an art event hosted by FIFA every year in February. The point of this challenge is to create art inspired by fungi from around the world. The prompts are split into week-long segments of seven fungi each. This week's theme is weird. There are so many to choose from. Which one should I do? I know, I'll do the magpie ink cap. To get inspired, I went over to Pinterest to get some ideas. I will have my boards linked below. I decided that an Asian sorceress type character would be pretty fun to make. Since this character is mostly black and white, I have the perfect doll in mind. Bring her in, big me! Oh, maybe I should have put something down for her to fall onto. Well anyway, here she is, the lovely Gulia Yelps. Now let's give her a makeover. To get her started, we have to remove all her hair. Thankfully, it's in a ponytail, so that will be much easier to clean up. Once most of it is removed, go back with your scissors and trim the hair as short as possible. This will make the next step so much easier. Don't forget to clean up your workspace! Once her hair is gone, it's time to remove her factory face. Take a q-tip soaked in acetone and wipe it away. Swoosh! Now the ugly makeup stage. Smear her lips all over her face. Once the majority is gone, take a napkin soaked in acetone and wipe off the remaining paint. Once that's all done, it's time to remove her head. I don't know what happened, maybe it was from when I dropped her on the table, but her neck peg actually snapped before I could remove her head. Thankfully, I had another Gulia laying around without her head. I stole her head for an upcoming doll project. Let's get to removing the last of her hair. I usually take a flathead screwdriver and run it along the inside of her scalp. This, in my opinion, is the most efficient way to do it. Once you have all of her hair pulled out of her scalp, take a pair of needle nose pliers and start pulling it out of her neck hole. This is the most disgusting, but also the most satisfying part of doll customizing. Ugh, look at this piece of glue. It looks like an old man's booger. Blech. Now once you have all of the hair out, do a fancy finger jig and take it off the table. Now that her hair's all gone, she's ready for her next steps. Sometimes I wish Mattel would just sell the dolls already like this, so this entire process wouldn't have to be done. But hey, that's life. Now it's on to her hat sculpting. Well, it was supposed to be mushroom hair, but it turned into a hat in the end. But the, it is what it is. Please ignore the green on her head. It was my attempt to cover up her head holes, but I ended up peeling it off later because I didn't like it. To make her mushroom hat, I used air dry clay. Air dry clay is kind of finicky, so make sure you have a cup of water with you at all times so you can smooth out the surface of the clay. To make the mushroom shape, I just added little chunks of clay around the edge to make a slightly wavy look. Now after 24 hours, this is what it should look like. I didn't really like how it looked at the top, so let's fix that. Off camera, I sawed off the top of the hat to make it a little less pronounced. Doing this did cause a large plateau, so we have to smooth it out with a box cutter. 
Mom, I know you're watching. Look away, because you're going to scream at me for doing this. Now take your box cutter and make tiny cups. <laughs> cuts. Now take your box cutter and make tiny cuts along the top of the hat. Now take your time with this step. It may look like I'm going fast, but this is triple speed. Always keep that around to reference it to make sure that you're keeping it in line with her scalp. Once you have the shape you want, we need to recover her with air dry clay. Always smooth it down the best you can with water, so that way when we sand it later, it's a little easier. After 24 hours and some sanding, it's ready to paint. I'm using Folk Art Matte Acrylics to paint it. Once it's fully coated in black, it's time to add the white spots that give the magpie ink cap its name. To achieve this, paint tiny white clouds in circles around. I decided here I didn't really like how the top looked, so I made it into one big splotch. that's fully dried down, it's time to add the decorations. I made these strands of beads off camera to hang from it. To attach them, drill tiny divots the same size as the beads for them to rest in. Once you're done with that, Coat one side with E6000 and set them into their respective holes. And once they're dry, this is what it looks like. I think it turned out perfect. Just ignore her lips. I had some mishaps during the face-up stage. On the topic of face-ups, it's time to start that. I used Mr. Super Clear to coat her and make the vinyl more susceptible to pigment. Make sure to spray in a well-ventilated area and wear a particle mask as this is toxic. To draw her face, I used watercolored pencils and chalk pastels. All of my materials are listed below if you have any questions. To start, Take a light gray pencil to roughen the sketch of her face. This is one of the most important steps as it will dictate what the whole face will look like in the end. Now to add freckles. Is it really a heliophobia doll if it doesn't have freckles? Now let's move on to color. Add some pink to the waterline, make sure to add whites to the eyes under the brows and the cupid's bow, and I decided for this doll I want her to have blue eyes, because I feel like those will pop against the gray of her skin. Thank you. 
Once the basic outline is done, make sure to add more colors and pigments until she looks how you want. For her pupil, I am using a dark indigo pencil to maintain some contrast from the eye makeup. If your color stops building or you want to save your progress, spray her with MSC again. From here on out, we just need to brighten the colors and darken the eye makeup. Make sure to stab the pencil into her lip crease to make sure the pigment gets in there. You can also use a paintbrush dipped in water to move the colors around if necessary. Now with her makeup, I am giving her a smoky eye with a harsh cut crease. To achieve this, I am just layering blacks, grays, and whites over each other. Once you have built up her face to where you like it, it's time to sharpen her eyeliner and lips with black paint. And once you give her a final coat of Mr. Super Clear, it's time to add the eye shines. Now realism isn't something I usually do with my dolls, so we're going to give her lip shines, because why not? Once that dries, add one to three coats of glossy varnish on her lips and water lines. And her face is done! Honestly, I think her eyebrows turned out so much better than most of the eyebrows I've been doing lately. Now remember her hair hat from earlier? Well somewhere along the way I messed up the shape and it doesn't fully cover her head, so we're gonna need to add some hair. For this I'm using yarn flocking. To make yarn flocking, just take yarn and chew it up with a pair of scissors. To make sure that you can't see the scalp through the hair, Paint it black, and then add a layer of glue. After the glue is added, smoosh on some flocking to create hair texture. This will never fully coat it, so you will have to add a second layer. And with that, she has the worst haircut I have ever given at all. She somehow has the ugliest monk ring I have ever seen. But it's okay. We're gonna just pretend it isn't there. Who's gonna know? It'll be our little secret. And here she is with her hat on. She turned out exactly how I wanted. Now let's reattach her head. Heat up the vinyl with a hairdryer to make it more malleable, and shove it back on! Now
Now it's time to make her clothes. As usual, I'm using a pattern from DJ Requiem, link in the description. I'm using one of their Asian-inspired outfits that I cannot pronounce, but the name will be on the screen. For this, I'm actually going to be using the sleeveless version of this dress. Just cut out the fabric, clap your hands together, and bam, instant doll clothes. Just kidding, this dress actually took a really long amount of time. It did turn out super cute though. Next is her little tiny jacket. Pin it to the fabric and we're going to use some magic to cut it out. Bam. And this is how it turned out. So cute. This pattern also includes a tiered ruffle skirt to go under the dress. To make it, I use the same fabric as the upper dress and a ton of lace ribbon. For doll clothes, it's best to seal the edges with Fabri-Tac so they don't unravel. For the lace, I cut out three strips, two in white and one in black. After pinning them together with at least a thousand pins, it's time to stitch them together. And this is how it turned out. I love how fluffy it is. For her accessories, I am taking a pair of Cleo Denial shoes and painting them black. Use a hairdryer to make the drying process faster. Once one is done, we're going to use some movie magic to copy it to the other one. And this is how it turned out. For her last accessory, every witch needs a wand. Shh, this is totally a magic wand and not just a toothpick I pulled out of the kitchen. And now to test it. Pew pew. I thought I could have. So her face is done. We have her shoes, her skirt, her dress, her jacket, and her hair hat thing. Now we just have to play dress up. And this is how she turned out. This is one of the first dolls I've made in a long time that turned out exactly how I envisioned her. I think she looks so cute. Let me know what you think in the comments. And here she is, the Magpie Ink Cap doll. But what should her name be? How about Maggie? Then Maggie it is! Thank you everyone for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!